God's Spirit is in my heart. He has called me and set me apart. This is what I have to do. What I have to do. He has sent me to give the good news to the poor. Tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more. Tell blind people that they can see. And set the downtrodden free. And go tell everyone the news that the kingdom of God has come. And go tell everyone the news that God's kingdom has come. Just as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you out to be my witnesses throughout the world, the whole of the world. He sent me to give the good news to the poor, tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more, tell blind people that they can see, and set the downtrodden free. And go tell everyone the news that the kingdom of God has come. And go tell everyone the news that God's kingdom has come. Don't worry what you have to say. Don't worry because on that day God's Spirit will speak in your heart, will speak in your heart. He sent me to give the good news to the poor, tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more, tell blind people that they can see, and set the downtrodden free, and go tell it. The news that the kingdom of God has come And go tell everyone The news that God's kingdom has come Friends, good morning. Lovely to be together today Even if we are distanced and doing the things that we have to do in this lockdown period uh, We also said that we've had to revert back to these recorded services but at the same time, we have to be safe and we have to be healthy and we have to be whole. So I pray that, uh, that you're comfortable as you uh, watch this this morning, that you've got a cup of coffee perhaps and uh, you've got your pajamas on and you're enjoying uh, a lovely day here on the Highfelt. So be welcome and I pray that we will be blessed because we came. We're going to sing uh, two songs, so I'm going to... I'll hand over to Luke to do that. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will say. who made the stars of night I will make their darkness bright who will bear my light to them whom shall I send here I am Lord is it I Lord I have heard Snow and rain, 
I have borne my people's pain I have wept for love of them But they'd turn away I will break their hearts of stone And give them hearts for love alone I will speak my word to them Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord Or is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night I will go, Lord Where you Send the poor and lame, I will set a feast for them, my hand will say. Find a spread that I will provide till their hearts are satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Yeah. Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, where you lead me, and I will So let us pray. O oh, gracious God, 
whatever the circumstances, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, whatever is occupying us, we want to pause and we want to worship you. We want to celebrate the promise that you make to be where two or three gather in your name and you don't quantify how we meet. Uh, You just say that you'll be with us. And so as we gather today uh, online, distance from one another once again, we're very conscious that nothing can separate us from you. Distance can't do it. Lockdown can't do it. We come together as the body of Christ. We come together as your people. We come together to worship you, and we do this in community, albeit online. We know, Lord, that you hear our collective prayers to you at this time, and we celebrate your faithfulness. We celebrate the reality of your presence. However we meet, we know that you are a part of what we do. And so we just want to lift your name on high. We want to celebrate you. Father, we have so much uh, to be grateful for. We have overcome so much over the last nine months or so, and we know that we're not out of the woods yet. But we also know that you have been a part of our journey, good and bad, sad and joyful. The one constant in all of this has been your presence with us. And so once again, oh God, we gather, we gather online, we gather to worship you, we gather to pray, we gather to remember, we gather to celebrate, we gather to mourn, we gather to pray for one another, and we do it all in the realization uh, that you are among us. Father, we confess that we question uh, what is going on. We confess that there are times when we wish all this was over. We wish sometimes that we could revert back to the familiar. And perhaps, oh God, uh, one of the uh, upsides of lockdown is that we are learning to do things differently. We are learning that that you will always be constant. Uh, Our circumstances may change, but we draw strength and courage and blessing from the realization that you are with us and so we praise and we honor and we celebrate you O God we lift your name on high and we honor you above all else and even as we pray we ask that you would be ahead of us we ask that you would release your spirit to us wherever we are as we worship now that you would just release your spirit and bless us and draw close to us And that you would open our hearts and our minds and our spirits that we may understand uh, what it is that you want to say to us today. Father, forgive us uh, for our faithlessness. Forgive us when we question. Forgive us when we get confused and angry and irritated and frustrated. Forgive us, Lord, because in our humanness we just want everything to go our way. But we realize that that you are working uh, in our lives even at this moment. And so we we ask you, please forgive us uh, when we lose faith, when we lose touch with reality, when we forget that you are still on the throne and that you hear every prayer whispered, shouted, sung, and thought. We just invite you, Lord, to continue with us now as we worship together. We invite you to release your spirit of forgiveness and wholeness and healing and restoration and that you would just touch us, each and every one. We give this time to you, O God, and we thank you that you will hear us, that you will hear us, and that you are with us. Please hear us now, O God, as we say together the prayer that you taught us to pray as a family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I just want to deal with some of the notices uh, that we have, uh, albeit somewhat brief, uh, because we are back into a heavy lockdown now and all the activities are at a standstill. Um, just a couple of things, though, that we want you to know. Uh, Luke is wanting to start a Zoom Bible study this year uh, that is going to uh, start up on a Thursday night, and Luke is going to give us more information. Hi, everyone. One of the things that the pandemic has done is that it's forced us to stop meeting together, not just on a Sunday for worship, but all the fellowship groups that used to meet during the week and do different things have had to pause. And our Bible studies that used to meet on a Wednesday and on a Thursday in various different places have all had to come to a stop. And so what I'd like to do is offer a Thursday night Bible study or it's kind of a teaching course. It's called Gospel Foundations and it's basically an overview of the whole Bible across the year in 42 sessions. And I'm going to be doing this on Zoom. So many of you know how to use Zoom these days to do video meetings with people. This is going to be special. We're going to meet together. We'll catch up a bit and have some fellowship and just say hi and then we'll talk through and study a passage of the Bible, watch a little video clip and I think it's going to help us not just to connect with one another even if it is online but to grow in our faith and in our knowledge this year and so do join me if you'd like to send me a whatsapp or send me an email or send us a message on Facebook and I will send you the link and you can sign in and join any Thursday it's not the type of course that you have to sign up for and come to every session just any Thursday, sign in and join us. And I'm really looking forward to sharing in this with you. And so we're going to start this Thursday, and I hope to see you there. The prayer list is being sent out on WhatsApp these days, uh, and it goes out with the bulletin. Please pray, folks. Please pray. We continue to ask. We continue to do this because this is the only weapon we have, is the, the weapon of prayer to hold our nation up, to hold our families up, to hold the folk up that are special to us. So please pray for the names that are on that list. I know that there are many names that have been there for a very long time, but that doesn't change the need. And so please, please will you pray? We want, of course, just to remind you that all ministry activities are paused right at the moment. This lockdown is a whole lot more stringent uh, than the previous one. And uh, so we're not meeting in person in any way. We are trying to keep uh, personal uh, contact in the office uh, to an absolute minimum. So if you would want to see one of the ministers, please would you phone ahead so that we can make an arrangement to meet with you. But uh, we leave that with you and we ask please for your understanding. Let's deal with the birthdays and the family news. Uh, these are the birthdays that we want to uh, remind you of. Beryl Marsdorp. Dion Hendrickson on the 18th, the two of them. Uh, Belinda Portgitter on Tuesday the 19th. Lindy Conway, Robert Brandon Kirby on Wednesday. Merle Tucker on Thursday the 21st. Shirley Parker on Friday the 22nd. Anne Jensen and Dawn Brady on Saturday the 23rd. And so we're going to sing to them and uh, wish them happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true, may God's richest blessing be always with you. Happy birthday. We also have uh, the anniversary today of Ron Jordan and Shirley Parker. Uh, that's on Friday the 22nd. So happy anniversary to the two of you. Uh, may you have many more. And now I'm going to hand over to the folk who are going to be leading us with small talk uh, today. And as always, I look forward uh, to this moment. So please enjoy. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome once again to small talk. Have you heard that saying that action speaks louder than words? So that means that the things we do, our deeds, are louder than the words we speak? Is that possible? Let me try and explain that to you in a personal experience that I had when I was very, very young. I was about 10 or 11 years of age and I was in a soccer team and we went to go and play against another school. While we were on the soccer field waiting to start the game, 
I heard the children from the other school shouting out, Losers, we're going to beat you up. Look at that fat goalkeeper. And those words really upset me. So I went to our teacher, who was the coach of our soccer team, and I reported what the children had said to him. All he said to me was, Mark, let our actions speak louder than their words. I didn't know exactly what our coach meant, but after we had beaten them, about, I think it was three goals to nil, we walked past those same boys again, and this time they didn't say a word. They were extremely quiet. And my coach whispered to me and said, Mark, you see, actions are louder than words. So boys and girls, when we hear of somebody in need or maybe has lost someone dear to them, our words are usually, you are in our thoughts and prayers. Those words might be comforting to the person, but without action, they are actually useless. Do we really take time to think about what they're going through, the struggles? Do we really take time, set it aside, and pray for them, asking God to comfort them. So, boys and girls, words may not always be effective, especially when they're not backed up by actions. Therefore, as Christians, we need to act out God's love through our actions. We need to be loving, we need to be kind, helpful and caring. Now, sometimes it's difficult to help somebody because you know the usual thing, you're always too busy or you haven't got the means. But then again, there's another saying which says, where there's a will, there's a way. Let's quickly look at two more examples of where actions are louder than words. Let's say, for example, your friend at school has forgotten to bring their pencil. Instead of just saying, Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Look if you've got a pencil, an extra pencil, that you can lend to them. Or maybe ask another classmate for a pencil, an extra pencil, to lend to your friend. And then secondly, what about when you see somebody, somebody being bullied? Instead of once again just saying, Sure, I feel so sorry for that child. Rather do something about it. Confront the bullies or go and help out the child. But if you're too nervous or too scared to do that, then go and report it to an adult. But make sure that you do an action to back up your words. So boys and girls, I would like to encourage you to look around on good deeds that you can do. If you ask any sportsman, they will say that the more they practice, the better they become at it. So the more you practice at doing good do good deeds, the better you will become at it. God bless you all and hope to see you soon. Bye bye. This is a song written by a good friend of mine, Rich. Many of you know him from Crossroad. It's a beautiful song, it's called a picture of your love I try to paint a picture of your love But I couldn't find the colors And my canvas was too small The colors of the rainbow aren't enough To paint a picture of your love at all I try to write a song about your love But the words sounded empty And the music sounded poor There's no music beautiful enough Paint a picture of your love at all. Na 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 na
try to tell someone about your love But my words sounded hollow And I was feeling small Nothing that I say could be enough To paint a picture of your love at all It was only when I reached out with your love Dry a tear of sorrow Or to help the sick and poor It was only when I reached out with your love That the picture of your love became clear to The grace and the mercy, the tenderness and care, the power and the glory of your love became clear to all. Okay, I have two readings uh, to bring you uh, today. Firstly, I want to read you from Matthew's Gospel. Uh, from chapter 25 and verses 31 through to 46. I'm going to be talking today about the practice of good works. Uh, so please just hold that in the back of your mind as I read this passage from Matthew. It reads like this. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Just do there. And then I want to read just a couple of verses from the letter of James in chapter 2. And I want to read just three verses from verse 14 to 16. James chapter 2, verse 14. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, 
Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? And I just thank God uh, for these passages from Scripture this morning, and I pray that they will, uh, the practicalities of them will find its way uh, into our hearts. So let me talk today about the practice of good works. Uh, we're talking about plans at the start of this new year. Ralph, a couple of weeks ago, dealt with the practice of following. Uh, Luke looked at studying the Bible last week. And I want to talk today about the practice of good works. You know, to do good works and to express kindness is sometimes pretty risky, isn't it? I mean, you knock on a lonely person's door uh, can be pretty scary, even if they have a very charming dog uh, with you. It's still scary. And sometimes, maybe often, when we love unconditionally, there is really no response in return. There's no acknowledgement of our acts of kindness. And this is disappointing and in many instances demotivating, isn't it? But friends, that's not why we do it, to get a response. We do it simply because God has called us to pour a little joy and hope and blessing into this sad old world. To sow a little love in this love-starved world. To practice good works in this COVID world, wherever or whenever we can. If I were to ask some of you to share your story with us, I'm sure some of you would relate a story that recounts some random act of kindness from another person that has had a profound effect on your life, maybe even life-changing. True? I'm pretty sure it is. There are so many broken, hurting, frightened, grieving people around us now. And you know what? They're our neighbors. They're the people we went to school with. They're the people we work with or worked with every day. They're the people who need to be found and saved and fed and clothed and brought home. The lonely older people living in our complexes all around us. And it's amazing how simple acts of kindness can have a profound effect on someone and can change a life for someone. Just somebody doing a simple act of kindness to them. We had this song uh, in the sermon that Ralph preached a couple of week, weeks ago. Uh, and it's a, something that speaks about a simple act of kindness. It doesn't say an elaborate act of kindness brought me home. Just a simple act. And I think that this lines up well with Jesus' teaching. When he said, it doesn't take a whole lot, even if you just give a cup of cold water in my name, it's going to make a difference. It's just a simple act of kindness, a simple note of encouragement, a simple walk next door, a simple hand on the head of a child fiddling with their hair, or saying, have a great day to a cashier before they get the chance to say it to you. I was reading the other day of a man who goes into a wimpy uh, and one of his uh, fun things uh, is to order a small meal worth about 30 bucks. And then he leaves a 200 rand tip. And when he goes outside the shop, uh, he looks through the window to see the response of the waitress uh, when she picks up uh, the, 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 the tip. And they jump up and down. And, and for him, it's an amazing, amazing thing just to see their joy. I want to give you a little quiz this morning. I'm going to read some information about two individuals, and I'm sure you can identify them, but hear this. This is the first person. He was born the son of a Lutheran pastor in 1875. He became an acclaimed organist and worldwide authority on Bach by the time he was 30. Later, he earned doctorates in theology and philosophy. In 1905, he enrolled in medical school so that upon receiving his degree, he would no longer have to, and I quote, merely talk about the religion of love, but put it into practice with his hands. In 1913, he and his wife moved to French equatorial Africa, now Gabon, 
to build a treatment center for under-resourced Africans. He stayed there for the rest of his life. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1952 and died at the age of 90 in 1965. Who is he? Dr. Albert Schweitzer. Who is this woman? She was born the youngest of three children in the former Yugoslavia in 1910. She joined a youth group and by age 17 she knew that she wanted her life to be God-guided. She became a high school geography teacher and was promoted to high school principal in 1944. But her career there was ended because she contracted tuberculosis. And in 1948 she started an unofficial school for young children in the slums. And she combined teaching and medical care to nurse them toward health. In 1950, she rented a home with her own money so that people who were dying in the streets could be transported there and to die with dignity. She was one of the earliest pioneers of treating people with AIDS uh, before the disease even had a name. She received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979. And she died a household name. In 1997. Who is she? Of course. Mother Teresa. Will the world ever see two people like this again? Will we ever see a modern day Albert Schweitzer or Mother Teresa again? I like to see, I like to think rather, that we see them at work more often than we think. And you know, the Bible is very clear on this. Listen to Titus 3 verse 8. We must all devote ourselves to doing good. And in Titus 3 verse 1 says, Remind the people to be ready to do whatever is good. Be ready throughout your day to do whatever you can do. And then if you look at Titus 3 14, he says, We must learn to devote ourselves to doing what is good in order that we do not live unproductive lives. Paul says, don't squander your one and only life by missing opportunities to do good. Now, I want to suggest that most of us think along the lines of if I don't do any damage to, to people, if I avoid hurting them, if I avoid putting them at a disadvantage, that's okay. But you know what, friends, it's not okay. Because if this is true of you and me, then we are simply doing nothing. And God is not happy with that. Dare I say it, God is looking for us to practice good works. To live beyond ourselves. To somehow reach close to the levels of a Mother Teresa or an Albert Schweitzer. Or wait for it, a Jesus Christ. Is there a way to live that gets us past self-absorption? To a way of life that improves our world and blesses not only our lives, but enriches the lives of all those around us? Have a listen to Galatians 6, verses 9 and 10. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And so, yes, there is such a way to live. It's the way Jesus lived. It's the way he called all his followers to live. That's you and me, by the way. To practice good works. To live beyond ourselves. And that includes you and me. And so let me ask and answer a few big questions that underscore the central theme of this whole sermon. First big question is, why? Why should we practice good works? Why should we go out of our way to do this? Why should we be different from the vast majority of those in this world of ours whose main aim is a good time? The answer is simple. Because it's God. God's destiny for all of us to do good. Look at this remarkable verse in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus 
to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. And when I say those words, I just think of, you know, when you pass a beggar, perhaps at one of the robots in town, and in the line of what I've just read you, do good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Is it not perhaps a little bit of God's business to place that beggar at that robot for you to do something about? And I know, and I know, folks, I really do, that there are lots of robots around us and every one of them has someone standing at them. But, but do you get my point? Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. God wants to pour his goodness into his world, and he can only do it through you and me. Mother Teresa said it, we are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. In other words, the good that Jesus Christ wants to do in the world, he does through people like you and me. Dr. Schweitzer once said, keep your eyes open for the little tasks because it's the little kind tasks that are important to Jesus Christ. How can God work in a COVID-infested world unless he works through us? How can God work with AIDS-infected and AIDS-affected people unless he works through us? How can God bring warmth into cold people's lives, unless he works through us? How can God unite a divided nation, unless he works through us? How can God do simple, random acts of kindness, unless he uses us to do them? How can God bring good into the world, unless we bring the good deeds? It's a little uncomfortable, isn't it, friends? So I want to ask the why question. Why should we practice good works? The answer is very simple. Because God has called, is calling, and will always be calling us to be his hands and his feet. Okay, now let's talk about where. Where should we be doing these good deeds? Many people will answer this by saying in a church environment. Well, I wonder about that. You know, Yvonne and I went to Menlin uh, some time ago, never been there before, and you can get lost in that place. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's enormous. And they have these maps everywhere that say, you are here. I just love those things. So when I ask the question, where should we be doing good? The answer is, wherever you are. That's why you are here. It's as simple as that. You are here. Do it here. Do it now. And then finally, the last question is how? How? How do you do good works? The good works that God wants you to do. The answer is in one of the greatest gifts that God can give us. By the prompting power of his Holy Spirit. Throughout the course of your day, the Holy Spirit will open your eyes to the good things that you can do in other people's lives. If you're looking. If you're looking. So how do you do good wherever you are? When we go into our world. Well, you do it wherever the Spirit leads you, leads me, leads us. Listen to him, my friends. Listen to him throughout the course of the day. The Holy Spirit will drop ideas, promptings into your heart more than you realize. Let's listen to him throughout the course of every day. So let me just hold this together. Why do good? Well, it's our destiny. Where do we do good? Well, wherever we are. How do we do good? However the Spirit prompts us to do it. And we will be and feel so blessed as we do that. 
Now, I want you to consider the position that you are in because we have to make this personal because it is actually decision time. On the altar table in the church I came from, uh, in Sunwood Park, we had an earthenware bowl and, and a jug standing on the altar table, and there was a towel draped over that jug. And the message of that bowl and that jug and that towel was obvious. God is calling every one of us to put a towel around our waists, figuratively, to reach out to one another in the love of Christ and to wash one another's feet in love. And I'm not just talking about physically washing one another's feet. I'm sure, folks, you understand the analogy. Are we figuratively ready to pick up the towel and begin to go in God's direction? Are we willing to pick up the towel and the basin and go out and practice good works? I want to ask you to consider becoming a foot washer for God. Because foot washers are the hands and feet of Jesus. Foot washers are the ones who reach out and make a difference. Foot washers are the ones who make phone calls, bake cookies, knit baby clothes, care for the elderly and the sick and the lonely in our community that go to shops for shut-ins, even within the constraints of our lockdown. Our church, your church, my church, cannot possibly use hundreds of volunteers around our physical campus. But God can use the hundreds of people who call him Seni, their spiritual home. God can use us wherever and whenever we are where we are. In our homes, in the complex in which you live, in your car, in the shops, in the schools, walking down the street, on the bowling green, on the golf course, in the coffee shops, wherever. Friends, I hope you've got the picture. Will we begin, or rather, will we continue to practice good works? But do it. Please, let's do it. Let us do it in the name of Jesus. And God will smile and you will be blessed and our COVID-ridden, broken world will be a better place to be. Thanks be to God for his word this morning. Amen. Let's just pray briefly for a moment. And so, Father God, I guess the only response that is appropriate now is for us to say the words here am I Lord send me I will go for you I will take my towel and I will do good wherever however we do please go with us O oh God because this is your business but we want to invite you just to Fill us with a new sense of purpose today. That at the start of this new year, we can begin to be your hands and feet out in our world. And we can begin to make a, a difference in the world around us. Hear our prayer, O oh God, as we pray it in the strong and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, there's only one song. Uh, for us uh, to sing at the conclusion of this thing, what is commonly called uh, the servant song. Uh, this is just a personal reflection. Uh, when Yvonne and I left Cape Town uh, a long time ago now to come into the ministry, uh, the church to which we belonged in, uh, in Cape Town was a very, very, very special uh, spiritual home uh, for uh, Yvonne and I in Bergfleet in the southern suburbs. And on the last day that we were worshipping at Bergfleet, uh, the then minister there, uh, a, a very good friend, uh, asked us to come forward. And Yvonne and I went forward to the front of the church as a sort of dedication from the church we were leaving. And the whole congregation sang this song. I hope you enjoy it. Brother 
sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. on a journey we are travelers on the road we are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load well, I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you. Speak the peace you long to hear. Oh, I will weep when you are weeping. When you love, I'll love with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. Oh, when we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together of Christ's love and agony. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all today and even forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, friends. Amen.